Welcome to Fabulous Lake Tahoe, your local's guide to the very best of America's year-round playground. I'm Jack Durst, and this is my public art walking tour of Lake Tahoe. If you're interested in art, street art, murals, sculptures, chainsaw bears, this is the place for you. Lake Tahoe has a long tradition of doing art and doing it in a public way where anyone can see it. And there is frankly so much public art in Lake Tahoe that if you go on by car, you're gonna miss a lot of it. So I've taken the trouble of laying out a public art walking tour that most anyone can do. Though there's a lot of hills and mountains in Lake Tahoe, this particular tour is three miles of very flat walk. There is great public transportation all the way along the route so that if you get tired, you can just hop a bus back to wherever it is you're staying. It is not a difficult walk. Just about anyone who can walk a couple of miles can do this tour, and it's a really good tour. There is so much great public art here in Lake Tahoe, all the way from State Line, all the way to far, far into California. This particular tour covers the area from State Line to the American Legion. We begin our public art tour with one of the most recognizable pieces of public art on the entire south shore of Lake Tahoe, the Harris Pony Express statue. This statue was dedicated by Bill Hara himself in 1967 to celebrate the centennial of the Pony Express. There used to be a Pony Express stop about a quarter mile up the road at Edgewood at Friday Station where the Pony Express riders would refuel, change horses, and get ready. The Pony Express, if you don't know, was such a dangerous job that they would only hire orphans because they didn't want to have to pay anybody for anybody's family if they died delivering the mail in the dangerous mail conditions of the 1860s. Little known fact about this statue, in the base of the statue is a time capsule put there by Harris in 1987 that can only be opened in 2037. So, one of the art forms that Tahoe is most strongly associated with in people's minds are the chainsaw bears. There's a company down in Carson City called Timeless Creations that employs an artist called Tuste, who whenever one of the trees is taken out, dead, and there would otherwise be a big ugly stump that couldn't be easily removed, instead of leaving a big ugly stump, they have a chainsaw artist come up and carve it into bears, eagles, all sorts of other forms. Now, after this, I would suggest that after you check out the fabulous chainsaw bears in front of Heavenly Village, go into Heavenly Village and check out the famous fountain. The next stop on our public art walking tour of Lake Tahoe is Heavenly Village. Besides the famous fountain at Heavenly Village that freezes over every year and is famous from a lot of my videos, if you've watched my videos, you've probably seen that fountain many times. There is a lot of other great public art that is available to anyone just for visiting Heavenly Village. Heavenly Village Cinemas also has some really amazing public art. The lightbox art in front of Heavenly Village Cinemas is some of the best lightbox art in town. It was done by dreamsandvisionsart.com and they did a truly amazing job. I want to thank Paolo Block on Google Plus for making the image of the eagle from them, from them go truly viral on Google Plus. It is amazing how many hits that image got and several of the other pieces of lightbox art at Heavenly Village Cinema have also gone viral on the internet, and rightly so, because it's some of the best lightbox art in town. Also, if you're the sort of person who likes to see your art in a gallery, right across the street from Heavenly Village at the Crescent V Center, there are four different art galleries of four different kinds of art. Scott Weiland has a gallery where you can look at some of his famous paintings of the whales and dolphins in California and Hawaii. There's an untamed art gallery in that space that does a lot of local artist art. There is also a John Paul gallery, which shows Lake Tahoe photography from photographer John Paul. There's also a Marcus Ashley gallery that shows a lot of local artists and does a lot of paintings of Lake Tahoe. If you're interested, if you're not a strong walker and you're looking to skip part of the walking tour, catch the bus across the street from the Crescent V Shopping Center to the Ski Run Marina, where the next major collection of art is. If you're willing to keep walking, do the extra mile of walking because there is some really amazing lightbox art along that mile that you really wouldn't want to miss unless you weren't a very strong walker. As you walk down Highway 50 in Lake Tahoe, you will see a lot of the lightboxes have been painted up. In 2009 and before, Lake Tahoe used to have a terrible graffiti problem when it came to people drawing on the lightboxes. 
So they decided if you can't beat them, join them. And they hired a local group called Spear of Influence that diverts kids from graffiti art into doing legitimate street art on the light boxes legitimately. In over the last three years, the city of South Lake Tahoe has commissioned Spear of Influence to cover almost 50 light boxes all over Lake Tahoe. There's also a lot of dumpster and light box art all over Lake Tahoe. And all of the light boxes you see in this video, unless otherwise credited, are by Spear of Influence. Our next stop on the public art walking tour is the complex at Ski Run. Ski Run Marina has an amazing collection of public art that you can see totally for free just for walking in. There is a wonderful chainsaw sculpture in front of the Riva Grill building that depicts an American Eagle with the United We Stand logo. It was made in 2005 by chainsaw artist Tosk who has done a lot of the chainsaw art in Lake Tahoe. He also did the bears in front of Heavenly Village. There is also a lovely mixed media map of Lake Tahoe on the side of the Riva Grill itself. A very impressive fountain. And most importantly of all, this is one of the concentrated places where you can find galleries in Lake Tahoe. Dirk Yerkich has a lovely photography gallery in this complex. There is also the Tahoe Art Connection Gallery where you can buy some lovely paintings. In the summertime, they have Meet the Artist events at both of these galleries, and there's a lot of great stuff to be seen here. Also, while you're here, definitely check out the Tahoe Queen, which is usually docked at Ski Run Marina. If you're interested in seeing more of the Tahoe Queen, click the annotation to see my video of the Dixie versus Queen Sternwheeler race that we have every year. I did a great video last year of the Dixie versus Queen Sternwheeler race, and you should definitely check that out too. Those of you in my audience who are history fans will really enjoy this next mural on the side of the El Dorado County building. It depicts the SS Tahoe, which was the first ever steam-powered tourist boat in Lake Tahoe, and is one of the most famous shipwrecks in Lake Tahoe. It depicts a woman with a period camera waving goodbye, presumably to the last voyage of the SS Tahoe from Glenbrook. It's a really awesome mural. It was put up in 2001 by Don Gray and his partner at Max Science. I'm here at Lakeview Commons, which is one of the great public art locations in Lake Tahoe. First of all, it is one of the most photographed sites in the area. If you want to take a good vacation photo of yourself in front of Lake Tahoe, Lakeview Commons is a great place to do it. They have great concerts in the summertime. If you click the annotation, you can see some of my footage of the Lake Tahoe Paddle Festival, which happens here every summer. But I'm here for the mural. Lakeview Commons happens to have one of the most overlooked pieces of public art in Lake Tahoe, and it is really much less famous than it deserves to be. There is a great tile mural at Lakeview Commons, which actually predates Lakeview Commons itself. It was originally proposed by Patrick Ferris Bennett in 1996. Unfortunately, he didn't live to see it completed. It was dedicated in 1997 by then Vice President Al Gore as the centerpiece of the very first Tahoe Summit. At the front of it depicts the view from Lakeview Commons and what all of the fish in the lake are, what all of the mountains that you can see across the lake from Lakeview Commons are. But I strongly encourage you to look at the back of the mural. The individual tiles at the back of the mural were made by individual high school kids in Lake Tahoe. And there are some tiles from some rather famous people. Famous college basketball player Jared Haas, who is now a commentator on ESPN, he has a tile on there. There's a tile commemorating Tahoe Tessie. There are many, many other great tiles. You can learn a lot about the people of Lake Tahoe in 1997. And the cool thing is, I, because I went to South Tahoe High, I was in high school with most of the kids who made the back of this mural. It's really cool. Here on the side of the Tahoe Daily Tribune building, you will find one of the most impressive local history murals in town. It was painted by Alan Wiley and Mike Svob about 10 years ago. It depicts the famous Tahoe Hotel at the peak of its popularity in the 1930s. It's got a great 1930s automobile, some wonderful people in Gatsby era dress. It's a great thing. Also, if you've worked up a bit of an appetite doing this walking tour, I know I have just walking down here, you will definitely see 
some great restaurants right by here. There's a sub sandwich place less than a block from here. There's also the Snowflake Drive-In, which is famous for having some of the best milkshakes and seasoned fries in town right next door to the Tribune building. So you can eat and be satisfied before you go home from your walking tour. One of the reasons I recommend the Visitor Center is that there is a lot of very interesting public art right in front of the Visitor Center on your way there if you're walking. There is a great huge metal bicycle that was put up to celebrate the America's Most Beautiful Bike Ride and the Amgen Tour of California coming to Lake Tahoe a couple of years ago. There is also another fine example of a chainsaw bear, this one with an eagle on it. There's also a lot of other really cool art that is right in close walking distance of the Visitor Center. Stay tuned to Fabulous Lake Tahoe later this month for coverage of the Tahoe Business Expo put on by the Tahoe Chamber. The Tahoe Chamber has been nice enough to let me cover their Business Expo again. If you click on their banner, if the video is up, the video will play. And here we come to the end of our walking tour in Lake Tahoe for most of you, unless you're a really strong walker, because we've covered most of the public art on this side of town. I choose to end it at the History Museum Partly because you can get all of your questions that you've had about public art in Lake Tahoe answered right at the Tahoe Art League next door to the History Museum. And the History Museum will teach you a lot about the great public art we have in Lake Tahoe and our long tradition of public art. We have here at the History Museum a fine example of a mural in Lake Tahoe. This one depicts the discovery of Lake Tahoe by Kit Carson and John C. Fremont in 1844. In February of 1844, John C. Fremont and Kit Carson crossed over the Carson Pass to Lake Tahoe to the very first sighting of what they called Lake Bigler after the then governor of California. And it is a really, really interesting story. John C. Fremont, if you don't know, went on to be the very first Republican candidate for president of the United States. He was opposed to slavery 20 years before it was trendy. And Kit Carson ha has become so famous that they have a statue in front of him in front of the Nevada legislature. Carson City, the Carson River, and the Carson Sink are all named after Kit Carson. And as Mark Twain says, when they erected the statue of Carson City, of Kit Carson, in Carson City, they made sure the horse's ass faced the legislature. That's what Nevada feels about its legislature. This is a good place to end our tour because there's good public transit access here. You can catch the bus back to wherever you came from, from right in front of the visitor center. Also, if you, I would strongly encourage you to stop by the Tahoe Art League's Art Center and Gallery where they can answer any of the questions that you have come up with over the course of this walking tour. Though I told you that a good place to end your walking tour is the museum, there's actually a lot of great material after the museum going towards South Lake Tahoe. Here on the backside of Meeks is one of the largest and most impressive murals in town. It's from the Art for Tahoe project and was painted exclusively by local kids with paint that DeVore and Meeks donated for the pro process. It's actually one of the most impressive murals in town and if you're willing to cross the street, usually the American Legion Hall in the summertime has meet the artist maker fairs where you can meet artists and actually buy some stuff. And there's a bus stop that's convenient to get you back to State Line right there. It's almost as convenient as ending at the Tahoe Arts Project. Also, I want to give a few shout outs to the people who inspired me to make this video in the first place. First of all, Josh Bexed Baldwin, it has a great channel about Ottawa and he does a lot of street art presentations on his channel. I would suggest you subscribe to him on YouTube. Also Dirk Schoenfeld on Google Plus does a great feed of street art. If you love street art and murals, Dirk follow Dirk Schoenfeld on Google Plus. He will cover just about every mural in the whole world. So I also want to give shout outs to some of the good resources that you can do. You should follow the Spear of Influence Facebook page. If you're interested in keeping track of when there's new box art in Lake Tahoe, the Spear of Influence Facebook page always posts because they're the ones who have the contract to do the box art. Also, if you're interested in art in Lake Tahoe in a more general sense, I would, I would suggest you check out tahoeartleague.com. They have a lot of great information about art showings, gallery openings and such in the Lake Tahoe area. So stay tuned to Fabulous Lake Tahoe and there will be a video of the concert report for April coming out right around April 1st. So stay tuned to Fabulous Lake Tahoe. 
I want to tell you guys that if this video gets more than 100 views and more than 10 thumbs up, I will make part two of this video describing the public art from the Y all the way back up to Johnson Boulevard where this video leaves off. So if you want to see the rest of the public art in Lake Tahoe, thumbs up this video or send me a message and I will be glad to make part two of this video. Thank you and keep Tahoe blue. Bye.